Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game tutorial. So in this one, we're actually going to start creating a script for our enemy. So as you can tell now, they have this script over here. And uh, they have, of course, a few fields such as the hit point, the attack per second, the damage they deal, and also a time to tower. Using the time to tower, we're going to be determining how, how long it's going to take from them to go from their start position to the middle of the tower and as you can tell they're not actually stacking on top of it they're actually subbing right beforehand and when they arrive to that point then we're gonna say okay well you're ready to hit the tower and then give it um, some kind of cooldown so guys without further ado let's get started Alright, so we've got our game running, and uh, last time we actually created some enemy. We were simply spawning them, we weren't really um, doing the movement mechanic. We were just spawning them around the tower as a uh, pentagon shape. So, as you can tell, here they are. Now today what we're going to do is actually take every single one of those and send them towards the center. To do that, we will need to have our own script for the enemy. So I'm going to right click on script, go under... C sharp script and I'm simply going to name this enemy. We're not going to be doing any uh, inheritance because I don't I don't feel like we really need it right now so it's going to be a single script with some public float values for our different enemies. And let's actually get started right away so um, since we're not doing any inheritance but I'd like to keep track of which kind of enemy this is I'm actually going to make an enum up here so a public enum that I call enemy type. Now enemy type is going to contain things like uh, this is a tiny enemy, this is a uh, fast enemy, this is a tough enemy, I think that's how you write it. I'm not, I'm not the best in English but anyway, um, we have our public enemy type up here and we're going to keep track of that inside a public enum, I mean public enemy type type like this, okay. Right, so what exactly do we need? in a enemy. We need quite a few things actually. First we need to keep track of its HP and we'll put that as a float so we can have some um, well, some decimal values and also let's keep track of its damage per second so attack per second. Let's make this one 1.5 by default. Of course those are all public and we're gonna be able to modify them depending on uh, which type of enemy this is. So for a fast enemy that you might, you might want to increase this to 3. But we can manually do that on the prefab. And uh, finally, public float damage float. I mean, public float damage uh, that I'll just be putting on the one. And there's also another one I'd like to do is a public float time to tower is equal to say 7.5. So it's going to take you 7.5 seconds to get from where you spawn to the tower. You could also put that in a speed value, but I think that this is just fine. And if it is not, then we can modify that a little bit later on. So we've got all of those value. We are going to move our... Um, we're going to be moving our enemy using a loop. Because I don't want to be using a rigid body. I don't want to be using a character controller. Those are too expensive for mobile. Well, they're not really too expensive for mobile, but we don't need them. And we can save a lot of processing speed over here by just using a uh, simple transform. And we are going to lerp. A vector 3 so let's go ahead and just do a private vector 3 start position a private vector 3 and position and um, that's pretty much it also with those comes in the famous private float transition that I like to use which is going to be used to know um, well, where exactly are you in between the start and the end position in a ratio so 0 to 1 um, we can also be using two, three other actually. Let's go with a private bull is alive, and that's for the pooling mechanic we're going to be implementing a little bit later on. So is alive is equal to false. Private float last hit, and I think that's actually yeah. So that's it. These three over here, and let me just move that right there. Okay, so we've got all of these nice values now. Let let's actually start using them, right? Um, we are going to start by declaring a public void launch enemy and the reason I'm not saying start actually this is going to act as some kind of start so when our enemy is actually created we're going to call the launch enemy but the reason I'm not using the start 
is because I like to reuse my enemy when they're pretty much just dead. So say we have this uh, tiny unit walking from his start position to the tower. He gets defeated, then he gets turned off. We don't destroy him, he actually gets turned off and we keep it somewhere in RAM. Now, uh, next time a new tiny enemy just is supposed to spawn, we're actually going to take the one that is turned off, turn it back on and move him and that's going to be it. So we're going to restore his HP, do all that kind of good stuff and we're simply going to turn it back on so we don't actually create a new prefab, we don't actually instantiate because that's also very expensive um, when you're on mobile. Well pretty much it's, it's extensive pretty much everywhere but we have uh, limited power on mobile. So whenever we do that, whenever we launch our enemy, we're going to say, well, start position is going to be equal to transform dot position, which is my current position right now. And um, if you remember properly, we do set the position in the spawn manager. So right about here, right there. So that's our position. Before we actually call the launch enemy function, we're going to be moving it first. So uh, when he enters this, he actually he he was moved before, and we can simply say, okay, so your start position is going to be where you are right now. Now, as for the end position, we're going to be using start position dot normalize, so we're making this a unitary vector, and then we're going to do times the tower dot instance dot get width. So uh, since the tower is always at zero zero zero. We can simply take wherever, uh, well, we can take the direction vector of where you spawn. So starting from the tower to where you spawn, we're taking a directional vector over there. A, and we're going to make it a unitary vector, so it's off length 1. Then we multiply that by the size of our tower. So it is just in front of the tower. It's literally just in front of the tower. And that's going to be our end position. So uh, this way we don't actually go, you know, from the start position and we don't all stack on zero 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 because else that's a little bit weird and the cubes are going to be entering the tower and we won't see them anymore. By doing this it is pretty much just going to put the, the, the cubes in front of the tower. Okay and let's also make sure that we uh, set this game object to true, set active true and is alive is now equal to true as well. Okay now we also need a function that is going to remove them, so private void remove enemy. And we're going to do game object set active false. And is alive is also equal to false. Now we might want to be putting some, some stuff in there later on. I'm just putting it there because uh, at one point we might need to add a function. So maybe when we remove that enemy, we'd like to play some particle effect or you know drop something. It's all going to be available now because we, we're going to be calling this function. Okay. And that's, uh, that's the two functions we need. Now to actually move our object, we're going to be doing that in a, uh, not public, in a private void update. And in our update, this is basically what I said before. So we're going to be doing a loop. So we're going to do, well, first transition that's our uh, transition float for alert is plus equal time dot delta time then we're going to do transform dot position is equal to vector 3 dot loop in between the start the end and we're using the transition float let's quickly test this out so we're going to go under tiny enemy make sure our enemy script is over here uh, let's actually change the type for tiny. We don't really need it right now, but uh, let's just make sure it's there. And then we're going to start from the preloader. So, click here, we're going to press A, and it's a little bit, well, not a little bit, it's way too fast. I don't know if you guys saw it. They're all pretty much just stacking right on top of this cube okay so there is some error somewhere in our code and it's actually okay I get it so it's actually doing the update without um, even being active so we say we need to say launch enemy first so the start position is set because right now start position and end position are both on zero 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 and we need to actually change that so 
we're only going to be moving this if is alive is true. Like that. And now obviously by default is alive is false. So we're never actually going to get in this update. We need to call launch enemy first. And that is something we're going to be doing in the spawn manager. So back inside our spawn manager, we're going to keep track of this enemy. So I'm going to go over here right before the instantiate and say enemy E is equal to, and then I'll make sure to just put this in parentheses, cast this as a game object, and then do a get component on it. So I know it's a little bit messy, but it's one way to do it. We could actually do that on multiple lines, but I feel like this could actually work. Okay, so now we got a reference to that very enemy we just found. We are going to say e.launchEnemy. Like so. And if we press play now and actually go have a look in the game, I press on the A and as you can tell, it's actually moving towards the tower and as you can also tell, it is not actually going inside of it, it's actually just staying right in front of the tower depending on which direction it came from. And let's actually try with the radius as well, so over here Okay, so this might be something we might want to fix a little bit later on. It's entering the tower just a little bit, but I don't think it's too much of a problem right now. If it really annoys us, later on we can actually fix it. And it's going to be quite a simple fix. So all we'd have to do is actually take the radius of the tower. Uh, so just say it's 1, then we say 1 on this, 1 on this. We do a Pythagore, which is going to give us this. And that's 1.33. Now I know I can't write, but basically we're going to say um, instead of going, instead of taking your start direction and then multiplying by the width of the tower, we're going to say, okay, so take this start direction and multiply it by um, the actual, the third parameter in a Pythagore operation. I don't know how to say it in English, but it's basically 1.33 if you are um, 1 in x and 1 in y. Okay. Or you could just give it a small offset. You could simply just go somewhere in your code in the enemy and just say get the tower width, then you do plus zero three. Something like that. So it's really up to you. Um, I'm just going to leave mine like this for now, and if I need to change it a little bit later on, I can actually do that in a future episode. So uh, in the next episode, we're actually going to either pull them or start killing them. It's one of the two. So guys, thanks a lot for watching and I will be seeing you in the next episode.